places like this should be pristine, you think, wouldn't you? It shows how much junk there is actually in the ocean. Clean ocean campaigners like Cornishman Steve Green are determined that the plague of plastic will not be allowed to swamp our shores. When we started, I did wonder if we could, in one year, do the whole of the Cornish coast, bit by bit. But the reality of it is every time we return, there's just as much rubbish there as there was before. Steve still lives a stone's throw from where he grew up, in the charming little village of Gweek on the Helford estuary. We just feel stunningly lucky to live in such a beautiful place. What better to do that with our spare time than to go and clean up somewhere, you know, and try and protect this, this wonderful environment? Plastic waste is a worldwide issue. On the trash trail with his dog, Rosie, Steve's thinking global and acting local. I'm always looking for where the leaves and the seaweed and, and the flopsam and jetsam are. Oh, there's a little patch in here. Because if anything, anything, any floating rubbish is going to be anywhere, it'll be, it'll be in amongst this lot. Rosie, look, what's that? The bottle. Rosie, fetch it. Go get it, good girl. Fetch it, Rosie. Bring it, Rosie. Good dog, come on. A couple of hours on the water, and even here in the back of beyond, Steve has quite some catch. This is a mixture of bits of nets, some plastic bags, some packaging. Rosie found a tennis ball, which she's pretty happy about. Rosie. Yep. Back on his houseboat at Greek, Steve and partner Monica reclaim and reuse what they can. But to carry out that scheme, Steve's going to need more hands on deck. So today, he's setting sail for the village fair to drum up a crew of helpers. This is just some examples of what we find. That kayak over there is made entirely from the stuff we picked up oh. in the cities. Hi, guys. How are you? That's kind of the point of doing events like this, is to try and get the message out there to people to think about, about plastic pollution. But it's also to ask people to come with us. I just think, at the end of the day, if everyone does a small thing, it would make such a huge difference. Yeah. Plastic is an international problem that no one alone is going to crack. But one scrap at a time, and with the population pulling together, Steve remains buoyant. It does feel a little bit like a drop in the ocean and I could spend my whole lifetime doing this and you'd never be able to measure the difference, but I feel like we're just going to try as hard as we can. On the South Cornish coast, clean ocean campaigner Steve Green is hoping to make a big impact on some of his homeland's smallest beaches. Steve's arrived at the heel of Cornwall, two and a half miles from Lizard Point, at Cadgewith Cove. With its whitewashed cottages and thatched roofs, it might look like a picture postcard fishing village. But today, Steve and his crew of volunteers will be hauling in a catch of unwanted junk. Roll it over the end, it's got handles there. Instead of toshers and trawlers, the group will be using lightweight canoes, kayaks, and his small, partially recycled sailing boat. Yeah, no expense spared. Finest quality craftsmanship, see? Bit of driftwood there stuck in as a mast. Well, it works perfectly well. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's lush weather. Travelling light means Steve's band of plastic pirates can form a small but nimble flotilla. Bathed in the globe-trotting currents of the Gulf Stream, 
the Cornish Peninsula gets more than its fair share of plastic flotsam. Each tiny boat is able to navigate safely in and out of Cornwall's potentially treacherous hidden coves. There's loads of awesome people out there doing beach cleanups all over the place, but generally they go to places that are easy to get to. But we're getting quite good at understanding the ocean currents and the weather so that we know where there's likely to be the rubbish. First port of call is the aptly named Devil's Frying Pan. How stunning is this, eh? A towering 197 foot high arch guards a tiny beach, a precipitous zone formed from a collapsed cave. Pollution from anywhere in the world can wash up here. Places like this should be pristine, you think, wouldn't you? There's no, no local littering happens anywhere like this, but it's just like shows how much junk there is actually in the ocean. With the tides and wind against them, the latter-day wreckers have limited time. And around the corner, another Cornish beach needs a plastics purge. The usual culprits, bits of plastic bottle here, broken up how long these have been rattling around in the ocean for, I don't know. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of little bits. I said I challenge you to take one metre squared of any part of the beach, turn over the seaweed and not find three or four bits of plastic, and just turn it all over. It's just it's everywhere. Obviously, it's not massively glamorous getting your hands covered in minging stuff and picking up somebody else's rubbish but I mean look where we are you know we're just in like the most beautiful place there's literally no way of getting here other than dodging the rocks in a little boat but it's really nice to turn your back on a beach like this and know that you've picked up all the rubbish this is the whole point really it's about you know my little boy over there he's just turned one years old and I don't want him playing amongst all this rubbish when I die I hope that this planet is a slightly cleaner place than it was when I was born, not the other way around. Steve is hell-bent on leaving no stone unturned. Totally obsessed with getting every last scrap off the beach, even if it is stuck under a massive boulder. But this is going to bother me. No. Trouble is, this could have a lobster pot on the end of it. Or it could be 50 metres long, who knows? Lobster pots get put in places where it's good for fishing, so that's in amongst the rocks here close in. When we get a storm, the line securing them, you know, can get stirred up by the sea and broken, and then it gets washed up on the beach. The fishermen don't want it to happen. We'd much rather keep their lobster pots. Bit of blood. Bit of sweat, but got it. It's right on my doorstep. I live just up there in Greek, and um, it's great to go off to these challenging little coves that are really difficult to get to. And I love the sea and everything about it, and um, that's why I do what I do. Steve's trusting the days like today will help turn the tide. A Cornish coast bathed in natural beauty, not awash with plastic. I absolutely love this funny little peninsula and what a place to be. And I call this work now. This is, this is awesome, isn't it? It's totally brilliant. <laughs>